When I first heard the words HTML coding, I was under the impression that it was a trade reserved exclusively for the Silicon Valley elites. I was also under the impression that web pages were built completely on combinations of ones and zeros, and that somewhere in Northern California, computer geeks were locked in dark computer labs, slunched over bright computer screens, hashing out lines of binary in robotic fashion. Needless to say, I never began to consider my own identity as a coder. To me, that was a word reserved for a very stereotyped demographic. So, when I found myself in an HTML coding course this summer, I was all but confident that I would succeed at this revered language. The first hour of the course was a blur of weird keyboard symbols and techno jargon, and come the end of the hour, I was so confident that I would never understand HTML that I failed to write even one line. What I realize now, and probably would not have admitted then, is I was almost aggressively opposed to the idea of ever figuring it out. As I had decided years previously, I didn't do computers. So rather than opening up my mind to my potential as a coder, I was rooted in the belief that maybe it just wasn't my thing. Maybe you've heard of Albert Bandura, a famous psychologist that conducted research on an array of social cognitive theories throughout the 20th century. He's that guy that locked children in a room with a creepy clown doll and played World of Warcraft with them until they attacked it. But in 1994, 30 years after those studies, he published a paper based on research he conducted at Stanford University. And the paper bears a really complex title, really only could have originated from Stanford, self-efficacy. As his theory of self-efficacy claims, Success in virtually any activity is built largely on a robust belief in one's own capabilities. And vice versa, self-doubt, more often than not, leads to failure. So, by tailoring this theory to computer use, a simple deficit in self-efficacy can explain why I fell prey to HTML coding failure this summer, and why people fail to harness the, computer, the, pow the power of computers every day. As my initially <coughs> rocky coding course progressed, the students in the class, all of them teenagers, were challenged to create a website basically from scratch, given free reign on any project of their choosing involving any language of code. And what happened was fascinating. It wasn't the students with the most experience with programming that created the most impressive projects. In fact, many of the beginners surpassed the coding elites. Their success with computer coding came down to their self-efficacy. And here's what some of them created. One group used JavaScript to make a simulation game. Another made a current events quiz. And I overlaid MP3 tracks to make a glossary. <laughs> and we didn't really know what we were doing. But the self-efficacy that we'd acquired over weeks of messing around with programming allowed us to create things that we never thought possible. In 2011, Ali Simsek, a university student from Turkey, published a paper on this very theory. And what we found is that if you Google search almost any abstract conjecture, a foreign college student will have published some related data. <laughs> <laughs> so Ali researched the relationship between computer anxiety and computer self-efficacy in her paper the relationship between computer anxiety and computer <laughs> self efficacy And what Ali found will prove my point. <laughs> Using scales that measure computer anxiety, and those really do exist, she found that self-doubt in computer usage is an almost debilitating barrier between, er, in, learning, in using and learning how to use a computer efficiently. There is a significant inverse correlation between computer anxiety, the tight feeling in my chest, as I tried to type out my first line of HTML, and computer self-efficacy, something that, until recently, I hadn't come close to. And now that I've researched it, I see this happening every day. The Journalism 2 class at East Grand Rapids High School produces a 12-page newspaper every month, and every month I watch computer anxiety break down the psyches of students basically every day. They're forced to use programs like InDesign, Photoshop, and Illustrator to design their broadsheet pages. 
and their attitude almost always determines their success with these programs. Confident students who are used to succeeding in class and receiving praise from their peers usually figure the programs out with enough left clicks, maybe a few Google searches. But insecure students, and there are a lot of them, often face design challenges with blank stares. Their fear of every potential negative outcome that messing around with the program could have, like designing an ugly page, debilitates them from trying anything at all. Here's some good ones. Um, <laughs> but that inhibition, I think, encompasses the crippling disability with which all too many of us face computers. Some powerful array of tech-savvy intimidation tactics leaves novices feeling helpless. So, how do we burst the cognitive bubble that tells us we can't do computers? I propose that by looking at what creates self-efficacy, we can erase computer anxiety altogether. We don't need to cross some imaginary line that separates the novices from the tech savvy. Instead, we need to get rid of that line altogether. To do this, I propose that we first need to shatter the deeply rooted stereotypes that cause so many of us to automatically count ourselves out from the computer game. By shifting our vocabularies away from words like coder and IT guy, we can create a more inclusive computer environment, like one that involves blonde girls from Michigan. <coughs> Luckily, resources to do this already exist in abundance. Websites like Code Academy open up coding classes that are free and user-friendly to anyone with internet access. In turn, we need to stop shaming failure. Luckily, my initial failures with HTML weren't looked down upon. Encouragement from my peers and advisors kept me going. We need to teach computer hopefuls to reorganize the shreds of their failures into the shape of progress. But to truly get the ball rolling, we need to light a universal fire to harness the power of computers. I posit that when we as a society overcome our inherent technophobia, the world will only get better. When used correctly, computers constantly spread intelligence, innovation, and hope. But most importantly, they spread beauty. How else could the New York Times combine journalism and code to map the nation's happiness? And how else could Google Earth allow us to travel the world any time of day, even though I know most of you just use it to look at your house? <laughs> Luckily, I overcame the stubborn disposition that kept me from writing one line of HTML in July. Of course, I'm no expert, but the simple switch of a positive attitude has allowed me to design and program projects that I never thought possible. I thought they were reserved for the techie stereotype. And of course, it's much bigger than that. Endemic deficiencies in self-efficacy have created patterns of social, cultural, and cognitive bubbles all across the board. Bubbles that can be bursted with a simple breath of confidence. And really, these bubbles have no place in the system altogether, because our own self-efficacy is the greatest predictor of our own capabilities. For now, here's to popping technophobia, <laughs> and eventually to bursting the notion that there's anything we can't do. Thank you.